Welcome to Center Stage Theater. We would like to remind you that the use of recording devices and cameras, including cell phone cameras, is prohibited. Also, please remember there are no food or drinks allowed inside the theater. As a courtesy to the performers and other guests, please take a moment to turn off all electronic devices and locate the exit nearest you. They are all clearly marked with illuminated exit signs. Thank you. Each year, Center Stage Theater is home to approximately 200 shows, 600 performers, and nearly 14,000 audience members. Please join our effort to keep this theater strong by becoming a Center Stage star with a donation of $20 or more. There are donor envelopes in the lobby. Drop your contribution in the box on the table or mail your donation back at your convenience. On your next visit, you will see your star shining brightly on display or just drop a few dollars in the donation box, as every dollar helps. Center stage, where theater begins in Santa Barbara. Thank you, and enjoy the show. During an exhibition of my work, I watched a woman scrutinize one of my paintings. She had her face so close to the canvas, I was afraid that she would come away with paint fixed to the end of her nose. I heard her say to her companion, I'm sorry, but there are too many colors here. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I said to her, if you step back, Madame, perhaps you'll have a better view. She did as I suggested. Oh, is it a building? Yes. Cathedral of Rouen. I live in Rouen, she said, but this isn't what it looks like. This is the cathedral at dawn, I said. Perhaps you were still in bed. <laughs> she went to the next painting. And what is this? That is the cathedral at 10 in the morning. No, I don't see it. She said and went to the next. And what is this? That is the cathedral at noon. 
no, I still don't see it. I was about to tell the woman she had about as much perception as a slug when she stopped in front of a picture of the paint, a painting of the, of the cathedral at dusk. She stared at it for a moment, then said, yes, I recognize it now. I said, you must be a very late sleeper. <laughs> She looked at me with a terrible sadness in her eyes. No, monsieur, that is the time of day that I go to light a candle for my husband. I lived long enough to see the invention of an airplane, but I never went up in one. At that time, only the very brave and the very stupid were willing to fly. I once made arrangements to go up in a hot air balloon, but the fog kept us in, which was just as well. The pilot was drunk. I've never seen the earth from anything higher than the bell tower of the Cathedral of Rouen. It was a wonderful view. I would have loved to take my paints up there, but the priest in charge was a narrow-minded wretch who believed that painters had no right to alter the perfection of God's world. What an idiot. <laughs> I always dreamed of seeing the earth from high above. Not a bird's eye view, but God's view. And when I died, that was the last thing on my mind. The last time I saw my mother was in a visiting room next to the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. I remember, we got there very early in the morning. They had donuts and hot chocolate waiting for us. The reporters kept coming in, and my father bummed cigarettes from them. I remember asking my father if we were waiting for my mother to come back from space. He said she hadn't even left yet. Then, my grandmother gave me a coloring book and a new box of crayons to keep me busy. I broke the point on the blue crayon, and I started to cry. All right, honey. Time for bed. Way to go, Ariadne. 
In January of next year, they plan to send a teacher in space. <sighs> Wish they'd done the same with mine back in second grade. Oh, uh, hi. Now you're listening to K Farm 101. Easy listening for the Dakotas. Honey, let's do that. Let's go drive down to Florida and see a launch. I think we should. Florida? Uh-huh. Are you listening? I'm listening. You're asleep. No, I'm awake. Are you looking for a campground? Yeah. Huh? You have to look for us. I am. I told you the other place would be full. It would have been. It wouldn't have been if we'd gotten there earlier. If we'd made a reservation like I said we should. You're the one who wanted to see the Black Hills. What does that have to do with anything? We don't have to go to every damn thing we, we see on the map. We still could have ahead. I don't know what's wrong with calling ahead. Then you should have done it. You wouldn't let me. Every time we passed a phone, I'd want to stop and you kept saying we didn't have to. You wouldn't listen to me, and now look where we are. You're right, Betty. You're absolutely right. You know, this is very dangerous, too. I could fall asleep at the wheel. <laughs> you're not going to fall asleep. You're too mad at me to fall asleep. I'm not mad. You're the one who's mad. I'm not mad. The whole point of us traveling is to see things. If we're not going to stop and you don't want to stop, then I don't see why we're doing this. I really don't. I never said I didn't want to stop. You would resent it that we stopped for the Black Hills. The Black Hills were an extra 60 miles. I was tired of driving. I thought the whole point of what we're doing is to see wonderful things. If we can't stop and see wonderful things, then there's no point to what we're doing. I'm tired, Betty. I'm just tired. That's all. Do you think we have a good marriage? <laughs> <laughs> Here we do. I'm lonely, Ed. I wish you'd touch me more. You want me to drive? Outside of the building, so that the inside can look 
like this. Do you see? Do you see how light it is? It's as if the whole interior is held up by nothing but air. And if you follow the lines of the pillars up, straight up, you are led to what many people thought was heaven. Before the airplane, this was the closest that we ever came to the experience of flight. Do you think it was worth it? Anyone? <laughs>
went to Montana, and we went over to Yellowstone and saw Big Faithful. Old Faithful. Whatever. <laughs> How long have you been traveling? Oh, wait a minute. Eight and a half months. A long time. <laughs> we want to see everything. Ed's been taking hundreds of pictures. I got about a hundred goals so far. I don't know who's going to look at them. <laughs> but anyway, we've been having what a time. The Winnebago has been holding up very nicely. It's a good piece of machinery. Uh huh. I, I hear that. Love to go into space with you. No way. I'm afraid of heights. So is Ed. No, I'm not. I read that someone is already setting up tours to go into space. Isn't that true? It's a scam. No, it isn't. They're doing it through Abercrombie and Fitch, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear they're sending a telescope up. Oh, yeah. It's one powerful puppy. It's going to see 50 times deeper into space than anything we've had before. Wait and see the label on this bud from 3,000 miles away. That's <laughs> something. When's it going up? Right after this launch. See, us trying to look at the stars from Earth is like a bud trying to look at this room from the bottom of a can of Coke. But with that thing up in orbit, we're going to see things we don't even know are out there. Stars and galaxies and nebulae. <laughs> and we're going to see other planets, man. I'm not talking about planets from our solar system. I'm talking about planets from around Alpha Centauri and the North Star. Some of them planets might look a little bit like Earth. <laughs> Some of them might even have life. <sighs> We're going to be seeing deep. I'm talking deep space. We're going to see the light from stars that are 12 billion years old. We're going to be seeing the creation of the universe. It's one fine time to be alive. That's a fucking understatement. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, that's all right. Well, it's time to turn in. Where's the check? Guess I better get some sleep. Yeah, I guess you better. We think what you people are doing is just wonderful. We'll be rooting for you. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Hey, I'll see you later. Are you a writer? No, I ain't. Come on, old gal. Time to hit the hay. I mean, he paints. I know. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> that Christmas, I asked my mother for a cabbage patch doll. But she didn't have time to get me one. All the presents she got us that year came from the NASA gift shop. She got me a plastic space shuttle and a package of astronaut ice cream. See? It's freeze-dried. My mother was going to read to me how the Grinch stole Christmas, but she kept getting phone calls. Hello? How are you? I'm great. How are you? While she talked on the phone, I played with the shuttle. No, I don't have to go back till next week. I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> Hold on. Honey, what are you doing? I'm trying something. I was trying to break the wing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real madhouse here. We have the family tomorrow. I thought I'd cook a roast. Too many people were coming to the house. No, thank you. We have tons of food. I keep telling everyone, if I gain any more weight, they'll have to add extra fuel just to get me off the ground. <laughs> well, as I've been telling everyone, I'm more nervous about getting in the car and driving on the freeway. It's a chance in a lifetime. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Excuse me, Elizabeth, would you please stop? Can I call you back? Pick that up. What's gotten into you? Nothing. She was talking on the phone too much. Honey, are you bored? I hated the show. 
Do you want Daddy to take you out with the sled? I hated space. Are you hungry? I think at that moment, I hated her. Honey. Come here. Do you need a hug? Does that feel better? You want to tell me what's wrong? I can't find my coloring book. Is it in your room? No. I don't. <coughs> Did you look under the tree? No. It's not there. Somebody took it. Maybe your brother has seen it. Did you ask?
Patricia. Well, my feeling is that most of the saints were ordinary people who happened to be put in extraordinary situations. I think it's what people said about them later on that turned them into saints. But then again, they might have been, as you have said, of God. In any case, can anyone think of a modern example of a relic? Anything that held some kind of magic for you? No one? Well, remember that time we took the trip down to the Air and Space Museum? And we stood in line to touch the Boomerang. Do you remember how exciting it was to touch something that had come from the surface of the moon? Matthew. Well, I know we've been to the moon many times and brought back many rocks. But it's still a miracle that we did it at all. Don't you think? I swear to the Lord, 
They would rather cut their own throats than see anything happen to you. You want a drink? <laughs> they came back down and opened up that capsule. Woo! Step back! <laughs> it's all still very primitive, isn't it? No, it's much better now. The moon landed. They didn't know what they were doing. They got up there with duct tape and prayers. These days, they sent enough of them up, they pretty much had it down. Should I be praying? Please, you're asking me. I pray every time I get in an elevator. Do the astronauts pray? I always pray for them. I never lost one yet. <coughs> I pray to be chosen to go up. Well, there you go. I have lost my mother once before. It was at the supermarket. It was late in the day, and it was very crowded. I remember begging my mom for a quarter so I could get a Super Bowl from the gum machine. She wanted me to stay with her and help pick up some cereal. So I went to the cereal section, 
and I pointed to the lucky charms. She decided we should get Nutri-Grain. She said I would like it because of that raisin. Honey, you'll like it. It has raisins. <laughs> she also got lots of granola bars. You can have one in the car. I followed her to the meat department. The butcher was busy, so we had to wait. I asked again for a quarter so I could get a Super Bowl from the gum machine. Mommy! Please? Honey, why do you want a Super Bowl? Because I need it! Please? It's part of your allowance. I don't care. She dug in a pocket of her dress and pulled out a quarter. Her right hand had blue magic marker on the middle finger. She kept good care of her nails, but her fingers were always marked up with pen. It was warm. I left her to go to the gum machine. The machine with the Super Bowls was broken, so I put my quarter in a machine that had creepy crumbs. I got a green scorpion, and I hated it. I went back to the meat department, but my mother wasn't there. I walked up and down the aisles looking for her dress. Mom? Mom? I listened for her to call back, but all I could hear was the supermarket music playing raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Mommy? Mommy? I saw a woman in a dress went down by the soups. Mommy? What do you want, little girl? I ran to the checkout counters, and I went from register to register looking for my mom. I saw a box of Nutri-Grain moving on the conveyor belt, but the Nutri-Grain was followed by a bag of prunes, and an old man was pulling out his wallet. I ran to the parking lot to see if my mother was in the car, but a man came through with a bunch of cards. Coming through! Coming through! And he didn't see me, and he almost ran me over, and I started to cry. I went back to the checkout counters, and I saw a little girl standing there with her mom, and her mom gave her a granola bar. And I knew that I would never have a granola bar again. <laughs> because I went to the gum machine and I got a green scorpion, which I hated. And I didn't even have the quarter that my mother gave me, which was still warm from the pocket of her dress. The quarter that my mother's hand had touched with the magic marker on the middle finger.
all those colors. Do you actually see all those colors, or do you just make them up? No, madame, they are all there. Betty, I'm sure the man would like to be left alone. She does the same thing to me when I'm trying to take a photograph. Always telling me where to point. Well, sometimes you need direction. He takes too many pictures of horizons. What the hell else am I supposed to take? Horizons are a good point of reference, am I right? Yes, they are hard to ignore. But there comes a time when you have to let them go. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I used to paint. Watercolors. I would have liked to have done it full time, but, well, you know. I understand. <laughs> Still got an eye for it, though. <laughs> it's one heck of a blue, isn't it? It most certainly is. Wouldn't you just love to paint from outer space? Very much. You know, once when Ed and I flew cross country to visit our son and daughter in Long Connecticut, I spent the whole time looking out the window. It was the most beautiful view I'd ever seen. I loved the farmland, all those fields in different colored squares. It was like a, a giant patchwork quilt. I kept thinking to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful if someone like Van Gogh could be sitting next to me? <laughs> could look out the window and see what I'm seeing. Has that ever occurred to you? About Van Gogh? No. <laughs> Have you seen my lens paper? A detective glove compartment? Yes. But what about your camera case? That's where it's supposed to be. Well, honey, I don't know. I believe it's in your coat pocket next to your glasses. <laughs> well, I'll be. Oh, you can keep painting if you want to. We'll leave you alone. I'm done for now. But the launch is about to start. Don't you want to stick around? It won't happen today. It was a pleasure, madame. I will try to do as well as your Mr. Van Gogh. <laughs> a friend of mine, Victor Hugo, once said, the horizontal is a line of reason. The vertical is a line of prayer. Forget about your horizon. Someday you won't even know it. They will disappear. <laughs> what I thought of my mother going into space. I didn't want to answer, so I hid my face behind my grandmother's purse. My brother laughed at me, so I hit him on the arm. My grandmother gave us lightsabers to quiet us down. I told her I wanted a cherry, so she peeled the paper down until she found one for me. I put it in my pocket for later. Then. My mother joined us. She let me hold her hand while she talked to the reporters. I plead with her wedding ring, and I was very proud that I was one of the few people that was allowed to touch her hand. She showed the reporters some of the things she was taking in this space. She had a journal, and in the journal was a bookmark that I made for her. I had drawn a rocket and stars and Saturn with the rings, and I had ironed them between two pieces of wax paper to protect them from the gamma rays. <laughs> then she showed the reporter something her class had given her. I was jealous, and I wanted to give her something else, so I took out the lifesaver. It was fuzzy from the lining of my pocket. My mother and the reporters talked. I tried to make the lifesaver presentable. <laughs> I told myself I had to get all the lint off the lifesaver or my mother wouldn't come back. Finally, my mother kneeled down next to me. She was wearing her blue space suit. on her shoulders. She looked so beautiful. Suddenly, I couldn't grasp that this woman was the same person who every morning sliced banana on my granola. 
grandmother kept saying, say goodbye, honey. Say goodbye to your mother. All I could manage to do was to hold out the lifesaver. She took it, put it in her pocket. And I knew that everything would be all right. T minus 30 minutes and counting, checking fuel valves. Madame, Madame, you dropped this. Oh, thank you. Are we in space yet? No, not yet. What am I thinking? Everything would be floating by now, wouldn't it? You aren't floating, are you? No, mm -hmm. only in time. <laughs> Are you coming with us? I plan to, yes. What might I do with all of this? Oh gosh, I'm not sure. They don't give you a lot of storage space in here. Are those your paints? Yes. I might have room in my locker for a couple of your tubes, but I don't think you'll be able to take your easel. You won't really need it anyway. No, of course not. That's silly of me. Did you see this? My little girl made it for me. Yes, it's quite marvelous. He lives, uh, death. Oh my god. I didn't see that. She wrote her name. You don't know what a big thing this is for her. I've been trying to help her learn it. But she said she couldn't because I gave her a name with too many letters in it. <laughs> she gets so frustrated. She always tears up the paper. This is such a big step for her. Oh, my sweet girl. I should have paid more attention when she gave it to me. T minus 28 minutes and counting. Fuel system is functioning. Is there a phone up here? I need to call her. I need to call her or she'll think I didn't care. I can't get out of this. Can you help me? I will try, but I'm afraid I'm not very mechanical. I need to get out of here. Please hurry. I'm trying with that. T minus 26 minutes and counting. I need to see Checking her. auxiliary wing flaps. I need to see my little girl. I am so sorry. Auxiliary but wing flaps are functioning. Open the Checking bubble. main wing flaps. T minus 24 Not minutes and down. counting. Main wing flaps are functioning. Checking right tail flaps. Right tail flaps are functioning. Checking left tail flaps. Left tail flaps are functioning. Checking rudder. T minus 15 seconds and counting. No unexpected errors. You think it will actually go up this time? Well, I'll believe it when I see it. T minus 14, 13, 12, 11. Where are we supposed to look? 10. It should be coming up about nine, 20 degrees to the south. Eight, that doesn't mean anything to me. Seven, Am I supposed to look straight ahead? Six, and five, over there. Just five, look over there. We have main engine start. Four, three, two, one. And liftoff. We have liftoff of the 25th Space Shuttle mission. And it has cleared the tower.
seconds. Velocity 2,900 feet per second. Altitude 9 nautical miles. Are they all right? Downrange distance 7 nautical miles. Flight controller here looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. Alright, everybody quiet down. That's enough. Let's try and find out what happened here. I think I figured out what happened here. Five of you were responsible for feeding this piggy. Sixteen thousand of us were responsible for getting one wrong right, into space. Who had Monday? And all of us were divided Heather up into different departments, Monday. see? And every department Heather, was divided to in, Miss into on Monday, divisions. You should have told the person and every on division Tuesday, into so many divisions. And food. many, many divisions. Who had Tuesday? And every division one at a time. had its own technical language, see? For example, all right. there's this little plastic part the size of my feet. And what about tiles Wednesday? and O-rings. Call it a C-scale oxidizer. Marilocks. They call Who it OMS regulator. Jennifer. And over propulsion, they call Someone it free burner fuel you thrust. For every other week? Hell, I just call it a valve. What about Friday? So I never this is said the I was Friday. See? Did I? It's just like the Tower, tower of, of the Babel. Tower of Babel. Jeffrey, can you tell us? Okay. Long time ago. Everyone in the world was going to build this big tower, right? They were building it because they were trying to reach out. So they started building this thing, and it was going really well. That got higher and higher, and God got really nervous, and he or she, <coughs> the one, he wanted to figure out a way to stop it. That's right. So God made all the people working on the tower speak in different languages. And the people who saw the wood couldn't understand the people who mixed the mortar. The guys in mortar couldn't understand the guys in brick. And the guys in brick couldn't understand the guys in drywall. And everyone started running around and shouting shout at, each, at other. each other. And, and no, no one knew who was, was supposed to do what. And, and everyone started fucking up. Mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and the wrong nail was put in the wrong board. And the wrong board was hammered to the wrong beam. And the whole thing came crashing down. The whole damn thing came down. We have to learn to speak clearly to each other, or else look what happens. That's what happened. Jennifer, would you take Miss Piggy to the janitor? Too many damn departments. But it was still my fault. No, Jason, you may not have the bones. <laughs> Dear Elizabeth, I'm writing this letter to you on behalf of the men of the ground crew of Shuttlefly 51L. We want you to know how much all of us admire your mother, and we offer our sincerest condolences to you and your family. I volunteered to write this letter because I feel partly responsible for what happened. I don't know what you remember, but there were a lot of false starts before your mom's ship finally got off the ground. Some of those delays had to do with the weather, but one of those delays had to do with human error. And this human error delay took place on a day that would have been perfect for a liftoff. The weather was clear, and the sky was a beautiful bright blue. It was as if God just lifted up a giant manhole cover and said, aim here. Well, T minus nine minutes, they couldn't get the handle off of one of the hatches. They had to get this special drill. But when that arrived, it didn't work because someone used it and didn't bother to replace the batteries. Let me just explain the situation. See, I borrowed the drill to fix the door on my van. So after work, I used the drill then I stuck a note on it, saying to replace the batteries. But I used the post-it off of someone's door. And the sticky stuff on the back was kind of used up, and I guess it didn't stay on the drill. I should have replaced the batteries myself. But in order to do that, I would have had to fill out a form explaining why I needed the new batteries. 
then run to another building to get it approved, then I'd have to wait an hour to have a process, then run to another building to pick the batteries up, then I'd have to get a guy to supervise me while I put the batteries in. And hell, I was at the end of a 20-hour shift of regulate locked bleed valves, and my next shift was in five hours. So instead, I went to a local place to wind down. It's a place where a lot of us hung out with your mom and the other astronauts. Once I played her a game of darts, she beat the heck out of me. You would have been proud. She also won the football pool. What I'm trying to say here is that we saw your mom every day. The last thing any of us wanted to do was to send her up in a ship that was going to fall apart. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I never meant to take your mommy away from you. She was a great example to us all. And we'll live long in our memories as a pioneer of our times. We extend our best wishes for your future and hope that as your mother did, you will be able to follow your dreams. Sincerely yours, C.B. Williams, and the men of ground crew number 7749, Division 86, Department K699-99, Kennedy Space Center. I gotta get rid of my van. The fucking door won't stay on. I 
killed seven people just to fix that door. God damn thing won't stay on. Can you dig that? Sugar, listen, I hate to be the one to tell you, but you're not that important. You had nothing to do with what happened. Maybe there are a few cutie things down here that you can't control, but there's a master plan out there that you can't read, let alone change. Maybe we weren't meant to send that telescope up. Maybe there's something out there that God doesn't want us to see. Maybe he thinks we just aren't ready. I wouldn't have screwed up if you'd let me get my sleep that night. Excuse me. How dare you? Don't you go putting blame on my head. You want to climb on the cross for this one, you go right ahead. But I'm having no part of it. You understand? I have had it with you. Go call yourself a cat.
right into the sky and disappear. When my grandmother told me that my mother went to heaven, I thought that heaven was a part of outer space. I was excited because I thought that meant she'd come back with all kinds of neat presents like a plastic harp or a pair of angel wings. I went to the mailbox every day looking for a postcard from her that would have clouds on it or a 3D picture of God. I waited for her to call long distance. When I didn't hear from her, I got very angry. I told my father I hated her for being away for so long. He told me that she perished in the rocket. And I told him that wasn't true. That she was alive. That she had left us and found a family that she liked better. He asked me why I thought she was still alive. And I said, because I never saw her dead. These are the reasons I gave myself why my mother didn't come back. One, I hit my brother on the arm. Two, I wouldn't talk to the reporters. Three, I didn't say thank you to my grandma for giving me the coloring book. Four, I wouldn't let my father hold me. Five, I didn't get all the lint off the lifesaver. Spaghetti? <laughs> My mother was a wonderful gardener. When I was a little boy, I used to help her. I got half a centime for every snail I killed. She had every kind of flower imaginable. Hollyhocks, columbine, tulips, lilies, pansies, sweet williams, forget-me-nots. Favorite flowers were poppies. They were very big, very bright, orange and red, fantastic colors. She told me, Claude, the secret to the poppy is to plant them firmly in the ground. If the roots are firmly set, the flowers will grow tall and never water them from above, for the flowers will be weighted down by the drops, which would defeat the purpose of the poppy, because the purpose of the poppy is to float above the other flowers. They are nature's balloons. Whenever I would cut them, I would hold tightly onto the stem for fear that they would float away. My mother died when I was 10. She caught pneumonia while trying to tie up some roses during the storm. The last words to me were, I love you, Claude. Don't forget the snails. After she died, I would have nothing to do with the garden. In two weeks, the snails had chewed everything down to the stems. My mother's garden was lost. I took great pains to punish myself for my neglect. I went to confession. I wouldn't take dessert. I wore my woolen coat without a shirt. I offered to cut my father's toenails. <laughs> but the following spring, everything started to bloom again. I killed the snails, and I brought my mother's garden back to life. One day, in late spring, the sun was warming the air, and the most wonderful perfume rose from the garden. It was my mother's scent, and I felt her bending next to me, guiding my hand as I dug in the earth, and I felt her breath in my ear, and she whispered, Lord, Always turn the soil in the spring. Don't hurt the worms. Feed the roses twice a year. And please, don't ever water poppies from the top. It's up! They got it up! God damn! They got the telescope up! We're gonna see to the edge of the universe! 
universe. experience in our marriage that we ever had. It was very nice. It's <laughs> not what you said to me. Well, at first it was silly. It was very silly. It takes some practice. You can't make any sudden moves. It can be dangerous. I nearly killed poor Ed. That's right. She almost killed me. I accidentally kicked his leg and he went sailing into the air well, like that. I remember our clothes. Oh, that was pretty wild. We didn't put our clothes away. And they just hung there. In mid air. And the more we moved, the more the clothes tumbled, tumbled around. around. And they kept dangling up at our feet. It was like it was like being in a giant washing machine. It was like being underwater. That's right. Underwater. Betty looked like a mermaid. Oh, stop. Her hair was floating out from her head. Her bosom. Yeah. Her bosoms had a life of their own. You thought that I was funny looking. You should have seen what you looked like. I never said you were funny looking. 
<laughs> you were beautiful. So, anyway. Anyway. It was very silly. But, once you figured out what we were doing... <laughs> and I think they've heard enough. You see, on Earth, everything is horizontal or vertical. But in outer space, it's, it's 3D. Even with a bad back, we're already friendless. <laughs> what was it you said to me? I don't remember. Betty said, the best part about making love in outer space is you don't have to worry about who's on top. <laughs> it's true. There were two rooms in our room, two windows in our room. On one side, we looked out at the universe. On the other side, we looked down at the earth. Ed held me, and we watched the sunset. And then a few minutes later, we watched it rise again. <laughs> and then on the other side was the whole universe stretched out before us, with the brightest stars we'd ever seen. We were suspended next to each other, very still. Feeling no weight. It was like we weren't two people anymore, but two, two spirits. spirits who had flown up on her. I had to manage the conditions of space before I could start to paint. One can't simply throw one's brush down and pick up another as you do on Earth, as anything you set aside will float away. But thanks to this wonderful material called Velcro, I'm able to keep my tubes attached to my smock. <laughs> However, I do tend to lose track of the caps and have to hump them down like butterflies when I'm done. The paint itself is thick enough so that if I'm careful it stays adhered to the palette. <laughs> Sometimes in my enthusiasm, I squeeze the tube too hard and the paint will float away from me in the form of a brightly colored snake. The view outside the window is quite intriguing. There's no horizon line to speak of, just patterns of clouds and land and sea and a clear, fantastic light. Every 90 minutes, we circle the earth, and I have the pleasure of watching 16 sunsets a day. My only regret is that it passes by so fast. When I painted my series of the cathedral, I used to be enormously frustrated with the rapid change of light. But the time I had then was luxurious compared to what I have now. So I lined up six canvases in a row, and I work on each section of the earth as we sail by. And when we pass in tonight, I load up my palette with paint so that I'm ready to start back on canvas number one. It, had, I, it takes 15 orbits to finish my paintings when, this unit, when the Earth slips into another time of day. I plan on painting each piece of Earth in every kind of light. I'm very much looking forward to seeing the Mediterranean at dawn. And I've heard that the Swiss Alps are quite spectacular at dusk. I've been painting for four straight days now. I have no desire to eat or sleep. My body is no longer a consequence. I have only eyes, and a hand, and a brush, and paint, and the sun endlessly bouncing colors off the earth. And I will continue to paint as long as this wonderful rocket will keep me in space. About a year after my mother died, my father took us to the Mingus family circus. Even at that age, my brother and I could tell it was a pretty raunchy operation. All the men who set up the tents and shoveled the elephant poop had tattoos and bad teeth. My brother told me they were all drug addicts. We saw one of them throwing up behind a trailer. At intermission, I stayed in the tent and watched them set up the trapeze for the high wire act. About a dozen of them ran around hoisting lines of rope and fitting metal poles in the ground. I saw two of them trying to keep a giant metal pole taut against the wires. 
It wasn't tall enough, so they stuck a rubber tire under it. That didn't work, so they kept slipping pieces of wood between the tire and the pole, like you slip matchbooks under a table leg to keep it from wobbling. I thought maybe I should tell someone about this, but then the lights dimmed and my brother pulled me back to my seat. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would direct your attention to above the ring, the Mingus Family Circus is proudly to present the fearless first family of flights, the Flying Hernandez. Hernandez Hernandez as he came out, dressed in blue tights and sparkles and smiling and waving. They were nice looking people. I wanted to run up to them and shout, don't fly! Don't fly! Something will happen! Don't fly! But I just sat there and ate my brother's popcorn and watched as the Flying Hernandez's shed their capes and climbed the ropes. As the first Hernandez stepped onto the tiny platform 30 feet above, I waited for the wood to crack and sent him hurling to the ground. And when that didn't happen, I watched as the head Hernandez grabbed the trapeze and swung out. I knew the wires would snap and sent him sailing through the top of the tent, leaving a hole in the canvas in the shape of his body. <laughs> and when that didn't happen, I knew we were only waiting for the biggest disaster of all. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can have your attention, please. The Flying Hernandez are about to perform their famous simultaneous triple somersault. We request to please remain absolutely silent for the duration of their act. Everyone in the tent was still. The only thing moving was the head Hernandez who was swinging back and forth by his knees and flexing his hands. I wondered if he knew about the rubber tire and the wooden blocks. I wondered if he knew that they were all about to be killed.
don't use that word anymore. Because whatever seems impossible now will be possible later on. It could happen in your lifetime, or it could happen for someone 200 years from now. I will never see all the miracles of mankind, but one miracle is enough for me to know that anything we dream, anything, is possible. Okay, they're signaling me to wind this up. The other astronauts have to get back to work now.